If you want to get your hands on a pair of Nike Phantom Venom, then make sure you like this video, comment your size below, and of course, subscribe to Pro Direct Soccer. <laughs> yeah. I've never thought that deeply about boots. Yes guys, what's going on? It's Ned here once again for Pro Direct Soccer and today we're in LDN 19, we're in London and we're going to be discussing the new Nike game overpack and also taking a look at the Phantom Venom and a little bit of boot history as well while we're here. We've got some Total Nineties and some Hyper Venoms to show you. So to do that, we've got two special guests with me today. To my left, Lee Molyneux. How are we doing? Yeah, good, you? Very good, thank you. And then of course, YouTube's also favorite. Also to our left. Double left. Yep. Sharky. Nice to meet you guys. I'm the real Nike expert today, so. <laughs> <laughs> Sharky's such an expert, he's repping himself on his hoodie. Have you noticed that, that? Look at that. Look at that. C can you I buy that nice. merch? I mean, you can have it if you want. No, no, no. I'll give it to you if you want to represent me. You didn't get the tech police memo. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't told. All right, so firstly, let's kick off with a game over pack. <clears throat> yeah. Brand new on pitch last weekend. You've got Mercurial Tiempo in the grey and yellow, and then we've got the Phantom Venom and the Phantom Vision in the red. So, Sharky, I'm coming to you first. Opinions. What are we thinking on this pack? Well, just looking at them. I have obviously haven't tried them, but looking at them, they look really nice. I've never worn Phantoms before. Mm -hmm. I've always I've only worn Tiempos, um, but they were like, back in the day, so they like looked a bit different. But just looking at them, these look really nice. I like these, and I like the Mercurials a lot. Yeah. I'm starting to like the sock. I never used to be a fan of the sock on boots. I'm starting to like it. So just looking, like, looking at them, I think they're really, really cool. Especially these red ones, I like these. So Lee, before we crack on, you actually work for Nike. Mm -hmm. Can you give us a little bit of background on what you do for Nike and your role? Uh, yeah, so I'm part of the global team, which are based in, uh, based in Portland, Oregon. Uh, I'm based here in the UK. Yeah, part of the product creation team, so that covers design. I'm not a designer, but I kind of show the, the designs to elite athletes. Uh, development, if we're coming up with new technologies, ideas, concepts, prototypes, I'll show them to elite athletes for validation. Um, and then product testing itself, so if we think we've got a, a shoe that's ready to go to, to market or, or kind of a year in advance, then I'll test that, validate that with, with players. So to see the pack like this on the table, in a shop, ready to buy, it's yeah. been a long process for you, right? Yeah. You've been there a long way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's a proud moment for the ones I've been part of, um, to see them, see them on store. But I kind of let go of them maybe six months to eight months before they get all the colour and get all jazzed up. And yeah. I'm a little bit six more in it. So when, when does this whole process start? How long does it take so to get to this stage? We've increased our cadence, so maybe two to three years from this shoe being an original concept wow. or an idea. I don't know how long I thought it would take, but I didn't so this shoe's in the store now, yeah. and I'm already going in saying what do consumers like about this, how can uh -huh. we make it better? Okay. So we've we start started the next website. one, we whether it's the next one exactly the same name, same whatever, wow. we've started the next evolution of a football boot, yeah, already. So you've been with these boots for so long, you've seen mm. them all the way through. If we're looking at this pack, what is your personal favourite? What stands out for you in this pack? Ooh, I'm here. Straight I'm out. all here. Straight out. Yeah. Um, yeah. Everything about the shoe. Yeah. So with the game over pack, obviously the headline has to be Phantom Venom. Mm. It's a brand new silo. It's the first time we've seen it on pitch as well. Uh, you've got some of the best strikers in the world wearing it. We've got Rashford wearing it. Cavani's wearing it. Lewandowski's wearing it. Kane will be wearing it as well if he wasn't injured. So Phantom Venom. Lee, set the scene for us. What is Phantom Venom for? Who is that boot made for? For, and it's going to sound very Nike, for the deadly striker, the deadly finisher. And I say that with, with um, technology behind it. So to so create Sharky, this shoe. You can't wear that. Yeah, no. No, it's, it's not, not you. you. I've, already, I've already mentally checked that. As soon as I said deadly striker, I was like, yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I'm drop not out. Part, I'm not part of this conversation. <laughs> so yeah, this is massively kind of, not techy, but like it has technology behind it to validate how good it is. Okay. Um, and I say that like we use statistics from Opta. Um, De Bruyne gets more chance good chances in a game than Lewandowski but you look at how many shots on target Lewandowski gets from his fewer chances and yeah. it's a higher percentage so it's so important that your accuracy is is bang on for a striker with this I think when I first saw this boot the one thing that I thought about this boot was it looks familiar mm. it looked like a boot that necessarily didn't jump out as me as new and different yeah. ways when you look at the phantom vision it's a new shape it looks very modern this boot I felt like I'd seen it before and I felt like I was familiar with it, but in a good way. Yeah. That's like, it has that true like Nike DNA and it felt like a boot that you just wanted to get on pitch and wear. Yeah. Like I said, it reminds me a bit of the T90s, like this, 
this little bit here. Yeah. It reminds me a little bit of the T90s, which is really cool. Yeah, we'll get onto that in a bit because we've got some of the old T90s with us today yeah. and we can speak about that journey of yeah. how Nike have gone from a T90 and ended up with the Phantom Venom. If you look at the pack itself, it's clearly broken down into two colour palettes, if you like. Mm -hmm. We've got Tiempo and Mercurio over here and then the Phantom range. So if you're looking at deciding what boots are suitable for you these days, Nike are pretty clear that if we get rid of the Tiempo for a second, you've got two options in Mercurial, you're either Vapor or Superfly, and then you've got two options in Phantom, you're either Venom or Vision. So can you just explain to us, Lee, what's kind of going through the thought process here and what should help dictate what boots are right for you? Yeah, so this is personal preference. Same shoe, personal preference, you like high or low. Uh, you like that feeling of, of a kind of sock feel and, and your, you, the boot being an extension of your, of your, of your leg. Okay. That's a personal preference. This one's got, a, you, can, you can clearly see, they're, they're, they're different shoes. Again, you've got that preference of high and low, but um, creative, deadly finisher. Mm -hmm. um, and we say that with confidence when it comes down to tiny things like texture. I obviously obsess details. And like you, you look at the micro texture on this and you look at kind of the macro texture on this and, and the science behind it. And then speed over here. Obviously, everyone yeah. knows what Mercurial is about by yeah. now. Like, it's your players, it's your Cristiano Ronaldo's, it's the guys that are top speed, top of their game, and kind of the creative flair players as well. Neymar, mm -hmm. the likes of them are wearing the mm -hmm. Mercurial lineup. And then the Phantom is all about precision, one way or another. It's either precision in front of goal mm -hmm. with the Venom or precision in the middle of the park with the Vision. Yeah. Uh, so, players like Coutinho, De Bruyne in the Vision, and then Venom, as we touched on, Rashford, Cavani. Um, Kane, all those kind of top strikers. Let's focus a bit more on the Venom. Lee, if we look at the FG version, can you take us a little bit through the FG and what's kind of the key features? A bit of tech talk. It's going to blow your mind. I'm, I'm, I'm already mind blown now. <laughs> <laughs> oh so, basic silhouette, basic shape. And I say basic in a good way. Like the silhouette for me is is insane as you look at the actual silhouette. And that's a massive, a massive round of applause to the kind of designers and stuff. Loads of, loads of tech when it comes to micro texture versus macro texture. So this honeycomb is a molding. This is actually injected, believe it or not. Not that you, consumers don't need to know certain things like this, but the reason we've injected this and not stuck on, yeah. um, so many players will come to us and say, I love the T90, why did you get rid of the T90? Why did you get rid of the T90? Mm. Yeah? yeah, you said yeah, it earlier yeah, yourself. Exactly. Yeah. Um, there are reasons we've evolved. If you look at an older T90, it's, it's got things stuck on it. It's very bulky and it's very rigid. Um, it's good for what it does, yeah. the reactive strike zone on it. Let's look at it. So there yeah, the reactive strike zone, this is, this is like stuck on, right? The stitching, yeah. right? So you look at the flexibility, you look at great in terms of like yeah. reactive. Yeah. This is injected. So you're not losing any of that kind of supple, mm -hmm. supple yeah, movement and supple feel, yet you are still getting the responsiveness. So it's kind of an evolution of the T90 for sure, but not losing any elements of what we loved in Hypervenom. Heel's amazing. We've used real premium materials. Uh, when you create a shoe, you have budgets to go by. Um, we've put a lot of our budget in this premium heel material because we feel that your shoe needs to be locked in place. And if one shoe's striking and the other one's slipping or your ankle's moving, then you can strike as well as you want. If your left foot's moving as your right foot's striking, then you're not gonna get a clean strike. Yeah. So this kind of lock, this locking, is, is second to none because of the premium materials we've used and, and the, the creation of the, the heel counter, etc. So, so much thought process gone into the shoe, which is why it was my kind of personal process and my choice. <laughs> yeah. I've never thought that deeply about boots. Like, I've no. never like, that is, just hearing it is crazy. I've never yeah. really like gone that into, I'm like, oh, that looks nice. Mm. Let me wear them and they're comfortable, I'll wear them again. Which I think we, re we need to realize that for consumers. Yeah, yeah, literally. Like we obsess details day in, day out. Yeah. Sometimes you have to rein it back in and go, that's on the shelf. I'm a consumer. What am I looking for in yeah, a shoe? Yeah. As a shoe for, for anyone. Oh, but really. You've already sold me on that. I want to get it. <laughs> he's already sold me this shoe. I'm just listening to him. So if, you watch, if you watch the camera, I'm just like, I'm like watching that. Like, yeah. Before this, yeah, it's a cool what shoe. would normally dictate what boot you would buy mm. and wear? Um, it's just the colour. So, yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Most of the time, just how they look on the outside. So if I like the colourway and things like that. Um, some of the time, if I've worn that, like the similar boot before and yeah. I like them and there's a new version, mm -hmm. I'd wear them. But it's never like, I've never really looked into much of like the patterns and like, like you said, if it's stitched on or the technology it's stuck on, the technology kind of stuff, the mm. heel, the lock-in. Like, I never really thought about that. Mm. Um, but you've already, I've said you've sold me. I Have you worn this. Hypervenom? I want to get these. No, I've never worn Hypervenom okay. before. And we've got a new plate on there as well, Lee. Can you tell us a little bit about the new plate design? Yeah, so uh, we've got the old one. This is the old one here, right? So 
We know how good Mercurial is with the Chevron. Yeah. Yeah, the Chevron, every single player tells us that Chevron is, is really intuitive to like, like a hoof almost, like it's, it, you can go forward momentum, speed, yeah, okay, right? Yeah. This Chevron is effective, we know that Chevron's effective. Conical's effective for twisting and turning, but when you're thinking about a striker, it's normally a planted foot to go another way. Mm -hmm. And it won't just be right to left, it'll be left to right. So you've kind of replicated both sides. Does that make sense? Yeah. So yes, there will be elements of twisting and turning, but when you're looking at like chopping to get your shot off or being sharp in and around the box, you want sharp edges. Kind of why we've replicated right and left exactly the same, because you're not going to chop in one direction more than the other. <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> a lot of people don't, don't look at the plate as much as yeah, they probably I mean, should. The yeah. reason you wear a football boot is because it has studs, right? Yeah. You can't wear normal yeah. shoes. But no, but when I, very few will pick up a shoe off a shelf and go, okay, that's going to give me stability. Yeah. They kind of trust us. Yeah. yeah. But again, this has gone through, as all of our shoes, they go through lab tests as well as like on-pitch tests with our players. So it's, it's validated. Let's be honest, most of us who are playing, we're playing on bad pitches. We're mm. playing yeah. on chopped up Sunday league yeah, pitches exactly. or like lower level conference or whatever. Mm. Um, it amazes me how many people still don't wear the right boot with the right surface. Mm. So there's mm -hmm. no point you and the guys at Nike developing these amazing plates and then as soon as someone gets on the pitch, they're just full of mud, right? Mm. Yeah, oh yeah. Like people, people do it, they wear FG every week and it's yeah. like, it's so muddy, so wet, yeah. they're still in FG. So obviously we have anti-clog version as well. Um, so Lee, can you just give us a little bit of an update on anti-clog, where Nike are at with it and what we're seeing on the Phantom Venom when it comes to anti-clog? Mm. First thing, yeah. this is way lighter than our anti-clog's ever been in the past. Yeah. Something we heard quite a bit, uh, something we've always worked on. Um, we've done it. Um, we've managed to get the technology, the film to apply to a lighter plate. Not only are you getting the benefits of the mud and everything not sticking to the bottom of your shoe, yep. you're still not really sacrificing anything switching to anti-clog no. from an FG plate. That's on no. there. It makes a massive difference. I've worn anti-clog, like, especially if you play Sunday League. Like, mm. And if you're turning up with an FG boot, you're just not going to get the traction, mm. you're not going to get the comfort, mm -hmm. and you're going to be slipping. So yeah. anti-clog is a great option. It's available on all four silos now you can get anti-clog. And if and you wore like, some of the original anti-clog boots, if you tried them then, then it's come a long way since. And you're not, the weight is, there's no difference hardly mm -hmm. now between FG and anti-clog. Mm -hmm. Whereas before, I think, especially on the Mercurial, it felt, a, few grams, it felt yeah. a bit heavier. Um, so it's wicked to see anti-clog here as well. So Sharky, we've had yeah. a little bit of a summary. If you're picking any boot yeah. now, let's get rid of the T90 for now, out of this four pack, what would you be wearing this weekend? Well, I started off by saying uh, just by looks, I like these and those. But yeah. now, after everything, I want these. Now, now you're in the technology <laughs> bandwagon, isn't it? No, I want these. I'm actually like really like if I was best on the league, these would be perfect. Like you said, with the anti-clog and the the studs and everything. And it's not FG. And then all this like stuff that techno like technology stuff we were talking about, technical stuff. I'm scoring a hat trick in these, mate. I'm telling you, from Saint Louis. <laughs> so we had done a play test on the Phantom Venom. Yeah. Angus did that in Barcelona. So if you want to watch our full play test on the Phantom Venom, um, I'm sure somebody will put a link to it right there. Is that right, Lewis? If it's not there, then it's there. It's, it's one of oh, Sharky, you're best at this. Tell them where they should press to oh, view the crap. play test video. There, the I button in the top corner there. Let's look at a bit of boot history while we're here as well. So we've touched on it a few times. We mentioned T90 and we mentioned Hypervenom. Mm -hmm. So let's clear out game over pack. Let's get rid of these new boots. So we've got Venom, we can leave that. That's where we are today. Uh -huh. Let's take it back. Ooh. Total 92. Now, Classic. Lee, remember this boot? I remember it, yeah. yeah. Sharky, you weren't even born. Not really, no. <laughs> <laughs> So, Total 92, really good boot, air zoom technology. For me, I think of Edgar Davids, Luis Figo, kind of the greats wearing that. Really good looking shoe, I think. And I think this is one of the things that you don't notice when people say, like, bring back the T90, bring back. How heavy are these old boots as well? Like, people compared to. They do like, it with the CTR as well. Bring back the CTR, bring back the CTR. Well, quick. yeah, there are good elements of it, but. Yep. Bring back elements of it. Like, I yeah, agree with the best like, parts for sure. Yeah, the best parts of it. But it's crazy how, like, times you can see how times have changed just by looking at these two boots. Yeah, just like everything about it is crazy. And then, top 93, so 2004, I we saw this ones, yeah. Euros. Remember the white and gold colorway for that? But top 93, we had that kind of like wrap around tongue, asymmetrical lacing that we're still seeing here, conical studs on the plate. But the plate again feels really heavy, they will be rigid. very rigid definitely doesn't feel like you'd have 
the same kind of fit. Look at the heel cup on that as well. Yeah, that's why I, yeah. I'm about to cut you off. That's why I say players back in the day are probably probably better footballers <laughs> because these boots are probably <laughs> these boots are like it's like the technical aspects of these boots are like it's made for you to play really well. These obviously they're a bit behind and they are le like legendary boots, but like you said, like they're they're heavier to play in. And these players, like these legends, were like still. So you want to give that to Lewandowski and say, go and still do the same yeah, thing. Yeah, do the same. Yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> a video. That's a YouTube video. No, can you still do it? There you go. But, but this is like, yeah. this boot is now 14, 15 years old. Yeah. So development yeah. time, it's like 17 years ago. Yeah. They were working on that boot. Can you remember how bad FIFA looked that's crazy. 17 yeah. years ago? Yeah, literally. It's the whole but different that's still game. a good looking boot. I still like the yeah, look yeah, of the no, boot, no, but no. I can it's definitely see technically yeah. we're a long way from that. Exactly. So, so 93. And then we moved into Supremacy. Again, Ooh. still very much feels like that same generation of boot. We didn't really go anywhere. A few like cosmetic differences. Yeah. Plate, is it the same plate even? Oh no, very There's similar more. plate. Same era. Not my favorite boot, that one, to be honest with you. It's so shiny. I like the Total 93, but not the Supremacy. And then we moved into Laser. So I love this boot. Something about this boot, the color, I always like a white boot as well. Really good looking shoe. Um, Weird skeleton graphic on <laughs> And again, that was probably at the time due to the fact that this boot was designed around fit, you know? Like it would have been there mm. making sure that it was the best shape for your foot. And it was obviously, you have to, when you develop a new boot, I'm sure you'll tell us about anyone, fit is such a key thing to look at. Um, any thoughts on this one? Yeah, we might see that again. Yeah? This is the game changer for me, this one. Mm. Brings back good memories as well. For me, not you. Yeah, no, no. In the playing days. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't playing then. Yeah, this is this is an older shoe, shoe but yeah. in terms of like what it represents and yeah, players who wore it. Yeah, Rooney. Always yeah, Team Knight just reminds me of Wayne Rooney. Yeah. I think yeah. And then Laser Two. So gone longer with that shot shield. Is that what they called that one? Yeah. Shot shield. Yeah. yeah. Um, you're starting to see some of these raised elements as well, like mm -hmm. what we have on the Venom. Mm -hmm. um, I think I preferred the first one to be honest. Yeah. To this one. I'm in agreement with that. Yeah. yeah. The yellow yeah. colorway was good for it. It was a good yellow. And then, I think this is like peak football madness. <laughs> oh, um, <laughs> when Best colorway as well. Yeah, this is the launch colorway again. Rooney, Torres wearing this boot at the time. But the raised elements on it are like almost like Predator like going back to like 94 Predator, like really mm -hmm. high raised yeah. up elements of the boot. Um, did you wear that, Sharky? No, I haven't, I haven't worn Would these. Would you wear it? I would I wear these now? Yeah. I mean, when I've got like boots like this in front of me. <laughs> but I would wear them like for like some sort of like, like a video challenge. I'd love to like go and back, throw back boots and try them. But again, similarities wise, it's, there is something in these elements that we're seeing here. Yeah. You can see some of the DNA as well, but obviously it's still a long way from where we are today. And then the last boot we saw in yes. the Total Night lineup, one we had earlier, Launch colorways up there in that briefcase, actually. That was a wicked color, mm. white and orange. Uh, laser 4. And I guess, Those are the ones. for me, this is the, oh, this is the is one. You? Those are my first ever boots. Oh, I really? Think it was like first the red, ever boots? <laughs> red, I think it was like red and black colorways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Those are my first ever boots. There were some good colorways, this boot. And I think, for yeah. me, this is the one which almost is like the dad of this shoe. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's yeah. a lot of similarities, even like the swoosh placement, the way that you see the vamps as well. Yeah. A lot of DNA. From here, it seems to be in this boot. You agree? Yeah, I like them. I scored a banger in them. My first ever goal at Sunday League was with these boots. Tell me about your goal. I mean, it was my first goal, do you know what I mean? So it was like, Tap it. it felt like a blow. No, no, it actually was. It actually was. It was edge of the box. It was a rebound. Like, keep, like my, I was playing in the centre mid, so the striker was one on one. Keeper came out, came, and then obviously came to the keeper, and it was edge of the box. Keeper was running back in, I'd shit first time. But then again, probably if I ever saw, obviously there's no footage of it, but I saw footage of it, it'd probably be a tap in. But in my head, no, 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 no I swear to God, I'm really lying it. to you. Everything felt slow motion when it was... So I, I don't know. Probably what I'm thinking of it is probably completely different. But my first ever goal was scored in those, I remember. All right, so that's the Total 90 lineup, Total 90 family. We can definitely see there's elements of this family in the new Venom. And then the other side was uh, Hyper Venom. So High Venom introduced 2013. It was a boot that was... Uh, I think the strap line was a new breed of attack. 
So you saw Neymar wearing it, switching from Mercurial actually to be the face of Hypervenom at the time. Now, Hypervenom, I think, controversial boot. A lot of people loved it. A lot of people didn't like it. I think Hypervenom 1 definitely had some durability issues with the, with the upper. But the upper itself, I think, I, I loved it personally. Um, did you work on Hypervenom? Yeah. Uh, yeah, elements of this one. Yeah, there were, there were durability issues which we corrected when we went through the different colours, so it was like an inline correction. So when we speak to players, they love this. Yeah. But they obviously, you know, if, if there are durability issues, that's, uh, that's hanging over them. But they love this, and you say why? It's because it's so supple and so soft. Yeah. No, but Hyphen and One definitely has a lot of fans. Great boot Very good at shoe, the time. Yeah. And like revolutionary at the time as well. Mm -hmm. It definitely had a little bit mm -hmm. of... Uh, Cause a scene when that introduced, and a lot of people switch from Mercurial into this mm -hmm. as well. So, so High Venom 1, definitely a good boot. Then, High Venom 2, yeah. I think we should gloss over this one. Not my favorite boot, I don't think it's anyone's favorite boot, the upper, but it was the first time we saw the dynamic fit collar on a High Venom as well. Um, there was a low cut version. Sometimes you create shoes and they inadvertently are stepping stones to get to where you want to get to. If you feel like you're in this shoe, and it's so supple yeah. that you've got no lockdown and your foot's moving. Like, as much as you love it, if you're not locked in place, you introduce Brio cables or uh, dynamic cables mm -hmm. to hold your foot in place. So there's, there's elements of stepping stones with some of these that are to get to the next level, but kind of what player feedback said about this, we, we tried to do with this and we tried to make something which was more substantial and really locked your foot in place. Dynamic Fit Collar was a brand new introduction as well. So, there's lots of new kind of tech in there. Yeah. Uh, we ended up changing it uh, material-wise um, for, for second colorways and third colorways. But um, the elements are there that you can still see in Brio cables. They're elements of this. Yeah. So you're taking elements of each to, they're all stepping stones. Taking the successes. To, I like that. Yeah. Because like, yeah. like, like, like I said, I've never worn these, basically. A lot of people didn't, like, weren't fans of these. But they didn't just like, were like, oh, well, let's get rid of these. They took the best parts of this. The ideas were always solid, yeah. Yeah. and execution can get better over time, right? Of course it can. And then we saw Hyphen and Free recently, kind of finished, end of life if you like. Unbelievable. Yeah, really good boot. And I think considering great boot, not so great. <laughs> and then we ended up with Hyphen and Free, especially the low version of Hyphen and Free. That became last season like the ultimate striker's boot, right? Everybody who was leading the goal scoring charts was wearing this yep. boot. What was so good about this boot and why did it work so well? Uh, this, so this, had the, this was kind of the first introduction of putting this back onto this. So these, these this is gonna blow your mind here. Yeah. Yeah. These firm up when you strike the ball. So okay. these are foam, so as you strike the ball, these are hard, but then they're soft so you can get that element of touch. That's just magic. <laughs> very durable, <laughs> yep. like this. This is very, very durable. Um, you can get the sheen of it, you can get the shine of it, you can get this matted, uh, in this way, this colorway, sorry, that you can get the matted kind of finish. You get a knitted youth throat, so it's easy to get on, but you've got the cables to hold your foot in place. So yeah. there are elements of this involved in it. But ultimately, it's these three combined to make this. Mm -hmm. These three combined to make this. Yeah, no, 100%. That's and how I'd sum it up. This was the, the first Flyknit low-cut boot as well that we saw as mm -hmm. well. So definitely big innovation in this boot that ultimately now has led to the creation of the mm -hmm. Phantom Venom. Um, for me, when I, when I see this boot, instantly I think of it as like, as you say, like if these were the parents, mm. this is what they gave birth to. Mm -hmm. This is the current future, taking the best bit of a great history of boots mm -hmm. to create a brand new kind of game-changing silo once again. Yeah, yep. yeah? I've, I've had texts personally from like elite athletes saying how good this shoe is. So I know like it's, it's, a, it's in a good spot. Not just strikers, but a lot of people. And the adoption rate straight out the box. People are wearing it. Sports marketing and are not having huge issues. Players are in the shoe. Players are loving it. So it's like that. That speaks volumes for me. I think. Yeah. If you're getting the best in the world wearing your product, then mm. and, right. and product out of the box, it's not even being made to them. Right. There you go. Sharky, how's your mind? Oof, I haven't been to school in about six years, but I think I'm learning more. <laughs> I think I'm learning Go more get a today. coffee. <laughs> yeah, literally. Right, guys. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this little bit of insight into the journey that Nike have been through to create the brand new Phantom Venom. We've seen the Game Over pack as well. So you've got new Mercurials. We've got new Tiempos. We've got the Venom, which you've seen here. And of course, 
vision as well. So you've got a brand new pack on pitch and available now from ProDirectSoccer.com. Guys, thanks for coming down. Sharky, always good to see you. Always good to see you as well, man. Lee, thanks for your time. I'm sure Pleasure. we'll have you back again soon for the next one. Pleasure. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you have, make sure you hit that like button. Leave us a comment as well. If you've got any questions about Phantom, any questions about the journey we spoke about today, let us know. We'll try and answer them. And then finally, look at that. Look at the YouTube, the pro. Subscribe. Subscribe. What you got to do? So subscribe, like, leave a comment, say, get Sharky and Lee back on. And, um, <laughs> Like, <laughs> we'll be back. Let us know if you want to see the Sharky and Lee channel. Exactly, there you go. He will just be teaching me how to be like mind blown the whole time. Sharky and Lee channel coming soon. Yes.